What's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how we find a real estate comparable so we can comp our properties and get an accurate understanding of value. If you guys are new to the channel, my name is Sumner Healy. I run a company called thelandpioneer.com. The last 18 months, I've done a little over $2.2 million in sales for raw vacant land on the internet. And I make these videos to document my journey and hopefully help others along the way. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna pop on over to my computer and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how we go and comp properties in five minutes or less. All right guys, I'm gonna show you my exact methodology for comping properties. This is a process that I utilize once I already have a property that's come into our system. Someone's reached out and said, hey Sumner, I wanna sell this property. Well, this is how we go about and actually figure out, hey, is this a good deal, right? Is this something that we wanna move forward with? So we got a property pulled up here. Um, it's a property that we own currently and this is out in Yucca Valley, kind of Joshua Tree area. So one of the first things that I wanna look at is first figure out, let's go look at the property on a map, right? We use data tree, you can use a GI map doesn't really matter we just want to figure out where's the property situated the reason this is important is the biggest factor that we look at is proximity when we're looking at comps that trumps any other variable to me it even trumps like kind properties right of course in this case we're just looking at land you could do this for houses as well but in regard to land so property is 10 acres and this is two acres but the property is adjacent that's more important than a two acre property that's 10 miles away in my opinion and little pockets like this prices can really vary right if you go a little bit west land value is totally different out here uh, than it is where this property is situated so three different tools we're going to use first is going to be redfin next is going to be lands of america and third is going to be data tree this is the exact process that i use for comping every single one of our properties so the very first thing i want to do is we can just figure out where this property is located to zoom out a little bit so you can see okay joshua tree is here yucca valley is here kind of in between right next to buena vista drive this property is two acres so i've got redfin pulled up here redfin is really my favorite platform it's not supported in every single county where it is supported it's your best friend there's just nothing better than redfin in my opinion i'll explain why in a second the very first thing that we want to look at is obviously lands let's go look at just properties that pertain to what we're going after here now right now we're looking at sold or for sale comps now for sale uh, is it's worth looking at I like to apply a discount to anything that's listed for sale. Odds are it's probably gonna sell for 20% less. So if you see it's listed at 200 grand, ah, safely assume it's gonna sell for 160. That kind of gives you a, a comfortable margin to work with. The other thing that I'll look at too, just while I have you here, is I'll look at how long it's been listed, right? It's been listed for a day. Cool. If I go look at a property, it's been listed for 400 days. Well, I'm not really going to take that information with the same weight as a property that's just listed. Properties that have been sitting that long are typically going to be mispriced. But what I'm looking at first is sold comps. That's always where we want to start. The closer we can get to being current, the better especially in this environment over the last two years all of real estate has shifted so much in a matter of months that we want to try to be as tightly grouped to the present as possible so we're going to go sold we're going to start with three months here and done um and what we're going to do next is there's a lot of information to sort through here right and there's going to be a lot of variance because there's different topography you've got mountains here you've got a little more of a flat land over here you've got uh, what will be like considered more infill lots in the town of yucca valley these are more or rural back here there's just too much to account for if you remember this property sits right next to buena vista drive so what i'm going to do it looks like it's actually slightly outside of city limits is i'm going to go grab our polygon tool and i'm going to just grab what most likely is a couple mile radius and you see there's mountains here to the left i'm going to avoid grabbing those just because i can assume there's also mountains down below that properties are going to shift in value um the closer you get to those mountains I, out here honestly it probably helps increase the value people like properties that are mountainous that do have access or that border of the mountain so it's something to take into account so if you'll see here in the last three months one property sold 0.73 acres at nine grand so we're gonna have to extend our search and this happens from time to time we kick it out a little bit you can see a 0 0.69 for 26 two acre for 43 2.29 for 43 about one acre for 25 We've got that same comp from before. Okay, cool. This is interesting, right? Our property is located right here, and right across Yucca Mesa Road, we have properties that are kind of in that same size range that sold for 43 grand. That's pretty promising uh, based on what we're buying this property for. Now, the next thing that I'm going to go do is I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to go look at the days on market. I want to figure out what's the story behind this property. So, listed on the 22nd of January, under contract in two days. 
that tells me that this was priced really fairly right that means that we could probably eke out a little more value on this if we wanted to sit longer so maybe 50k is a possibility here right what this is telling us is oh they actually listed at 35k so it got bid up that's really interesting and this ended up selling in february but it went under contract on the 24th now if i was looking at this and it had gone under contract and then fell out of contract and gone under contract and it, you know it's been listed for six months that's a whole different story they really had to fight to get that price right now what the, the, the broker did here is they listed low with the expectation that they're going to get a ton of offers looks like they did and then they got bid up not a bad play on their part let's go look at the other one over here. Very similar property. Uh, they're probably adjacent, honestly, because they're using the same image here. I'm curious if this is the same story. Yep, same story. Might have been the same buyer that bought both. Uh, let's go look at this one here. This one, 0 0.69 acres, 26K, June 29th of 2021 at 35. Then they adjusted the price about six months later in December. And then in January, it went under contract. Then it fell out of contract, got relisted. Then went under contract again in February and then sold February 17th to 26K. So these people took the opposite approach, right? They started really high. Uh, they had a fight to get a decent price. They lowered the price, went under contract, fell out of contract for whatever reason. And then it looks like they got another offer at 26 and went under contract on the first. So that's pretty fascinating to me. Uh, and in my opinion, this property is probably overpriced, right? If we look at that two acre, it was listed at that same $35,000 price point, but it got bid up. So kind of a different story here. I'm not going to go too much deeper on that, but I do like toying around and kind of seeing the story behind how the property sold. And what's nice about Redfin is it gives you all that data in a really convenient fashion. Now, the next platform that we utilize is Lands of America. Unfortunately, Lands of America does not give you a ton of intel. And you can see, hey, this is me here. Uh, first thing that we're going to do is go click and make sure that we're just looking at under contract and sold. And then we're going to use the map function. They've got a pretty nice map function on here. It's not quite as good as Redfin, in my opinion. The problem is they don't really tell you much of a story in terms of what happened. So you got to do a lot of guesstimating. Um, they also don't allow you to sort by time frame. We're going to kind of take that same polygon that we had on Redfin. The thing about uh, Lands of America is you're not going to get all the MLS comps funneled in, where Redfin is just going to be MLS comps. This can be comps that never make it to the MLS, so you can see different information out here. The problem with Lands of America and just the land.com network of sites is in a lot of cases, we don't really know how long these properties stay on there. Uh, it looks like about every two years they get updated. So a little bit frustrating because you can see that a two acre sold for 9k two acre and, and essentially 10 and this one at 17 that's less than ideal right uh, but what i would venture to guess is this is probably early in the pandemic or maybe even pre-pandemic you got this fifty thousand dollar comp which is a 30 acre so this is you know we're, obviously we're not seeing any of the mls stuff it didn't get funneled on here this is kind of uh, a counter indication of what we were seeing on redfin but I put more weight on Redfin than I do Lands of America, but I do like to just check. It's just another data point where I can see other sales that may have not made it on the MLS. Here, this doesn't scare me away from the property because I know these are probably really outdated comps. What you're gonna find more times than not too is Lands of America is gonna have land investor comps where uh, Redfin is gonna typically have um, like your state real estate agent or for sale by owner comps. These are people that are going to go for retail then usually lands of america people are going to be listing at a discount in this case it's not even that they're listing at a discount it's more so that these are just really old comps now the third place that we're going to look is data tree and data tree's got this pretty nifty feature where you can click over and you can go for sale and recent sale and we zoom in here it should populate boom so these little green icons these are properties that have sold uh the red icons are properties for sale and um, I typically, you gotta be careful on data tree. And sometimes the data can get real skewed, but it's still worth looking at, right? And what's nice is we've got a like kind comp here, right? So if we go over here, we've got not quite an adjacent property, but it's one lot over that did sell. So we'll click on this. And hey, this one sold for $45,000. So now we're getting some confirmation for what we're seeing on Redfin. Hey, we think a two acre is worth, um, you know, 40, to $45,000 and actually apologies this one is smaller than the two acres it's about one and a half acres one and a quarter acre so 
apologies for that. But we can see this property, which is just essentially identical, sold for 45. So now my hunch is telling me, hey, this property is worth anywhere between 35 and $45,000, uh, depending on how quickly we want to sell it. And if we're buying it at a, you know, a decent price, there's probably a deal here. I know what we bought this for, so I know it's a deal. Um, but yeah, that's uh, how we go through and do our comps for a really high level. Some properties are going to be way more difficult, right? You're going to be working in some areas that don't have much data. You're working in some areas where there's just nothing similar to your property. And so you got to take that stuff into account, right? You got to have to kind of use context because land can really range, right? If this property had a bunch of boulder outcroppings and a little river on it, well, maybe it's worth something different. And I have to take that into account. But from a high level, this is exactly how I go through it and comp every single one of our deals.